think I should start by saying I agree with you. It's pretty inconsistent for any uh, person to uh, abhor the defunding of local police and suggest uh, defunding the FBI. Uh, we've got to uh, make sure that the FBI is doing what FBI should do, and uh, that takes resources. Another thing I think that I have pointed out uh, during August on this whole issue uh, is that uh, uh, everybody maybe thinks about from top to bottom that there's problems in the FBI. I never hear from Iowans about the, the dozens of FBI agents that we have working the grassroots of the Midwest, that there's any problems there. But I think there really are problems at central FBI that we have to work on. And uh, we should have extraordinary confidence in the FBI. And I think they've lost a lot of their credibility for, and, and this isn't just the recent incident that you referred to, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. This is over the last uh, maybe good part of a decade anyway, some things that have gone on, mostly related to the two words political bias. Uh, in regard to today's meeting, we've requested that the judicial nominees on the markup for the first time be held over. We can vote on two U.S. Marshal nominees on the agenda. I want to refer to one of the nominees uh, that I've had close working relationship with, uh, Rich Dezino, uh, who served as my chief counsel for national security and crime. I'm happy to see that his nomination to the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board is receiving a vote today. Uh, having served in the Justice Department, he knows that the government has a duty to its citizens. Uh, the government has a responsibility to uh, protect uh, fellow Americans. He also understands the need to protect civil liberties and privacy. I'm also confident that Rich understands how to work in a bipartisan and nonpartisan way. He did it repeatedly uh, for working, uh, by, while working on this committee, and I think it's important that he'll bring the, uh, that ability to the board. I want to say a few words on some of the bipartisan bills that I've worked their way through this committee and through the Senate. Uh, first, uh, this committee has discharged the Eagles Act and is currently on the hotline to pass the Senate. I've worked with the parents of victims from the Parkland, Florida, with the attorneys general of 40 states, uh, with 10 Senate co-sponsors from both sides of the aisle, and with a bipartisan team, including Representative Deutsch and Deesa Barrett uh, in the House uh, to move this bill forward. The bill will give the Secret Service the resources they need to help organizations who voluntarily request training on the, sign, uh, on the signs of when a person is mobilizing towards violent or interdict them, and particularly if they require mental health care. It's long past time that the community organizations, particularly our school districts, that want this training file, uh, finally are able to get it so that future tragedies can be prevented. I hope this bill will pass the Senate soon. Second, with Senators Feinstein and Schatz, I've led uh, a bill to expand cannabis research. This bill has passed the Senate and now uh, the House with a few revisions, and I look forward to it passing the Senate again and becoming law. Uh, the Senate passed two House bills uh, during police week before the beginning of the last recess. Uh, one was the House companion of a bill that I co-sponsored with Senator Ossoff, uh, giving resources to police to deal with victim of traumatic brain injury. But the House has not moved on the four pro-police bills sent over by the Senate after being voted out of this committee. That includes a bill that I led with Senator Coons to help police combat PTSD, and one that I led with Senator Cortez Masto to uh, fund small police departments 
as well as another two led by Senators Cornyn and White House. We've all read the news reports that some House members don't want to see these pro-police bills move forward. I hope that these reports are wrong and that the House will soon do us the same courtesy as we did them with their bills and pass our Police Week bills. Uh, lastly, uh, I sent a letter to Attorney General Garland about his memo about members of the uh, Department of Justice uh, almost saying don't, cor don't uh, uh, correspond or don't uh, uh, communicate with Congress. Uh, the timing of that memo is quite suspect. It came on the heels of the whistleblowers approaching Congress. Uh, you read about my participation uh, in, in, with those uh, whistleblowers and uh, getting some changes made, or at least making public some changes. One person retired or fired as a result of it. Uh, but this memo failed to mention that we have two whistleblower protection statutes that, he, that his memo would be either having a chilling effect on whistleblowers doing what they should or uh, maybe stopping it entirely. Memos like this can chill whistleblowers and that ought to be considered unacceptable by everybody uh, in this uh, committee. Whistleblowers are patriots. They uh, expose uh, government wrongdoing that we wouldn't otherwise know anything about. And I think I proved that we uh, got some very favorable information from whistleblowers that were at least made able to make some small changes in some of the things that the FBI does that's wrong. I yield. Thanks.